Hello and welcome to the Nintendo Network. And it is that sad time of year again. E3 has come and gone. The hype train has pulled into its station and now we have nothing to look forward to. Except, you know, all the exciting stuff that was announced and shown off. Okay, not a lot of new things were truly announced by Nintendo in particular, but there's still a lot to go over and talk about. So let's dive right into unpacking Nintendo's E3 2018 conference. Before we truly get into this, there is the Don fan in the room we're going to have to talk about. For the past few years, Nintendo has been giving focus on one game and then sprinkles of other games coming. Sort of. In 2016 it was Breath of the Wild, and really, Breath of the Wild. Last year in 2017 it was Super Mario Odyssey, and didn't feel just like Odyssey, although going to the Nintendo booth might have fooled you. And this year, 2018, was Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. We now know that every character from every Smash game will be an Ultimate, making this series of videos pretty pointless. Thanks, Nintendo. But I get Wolf back, so I forgive you. We got a release date of December 7th, which is a bit later than I predicted. But I don't want to go too deep into Smash. I have a whole reaction video. Click on the annotation to view it. My feelings are not too different even a week later about it. I'm more excited about seeing what modes are coming in the coming months. But where last year did focus on Mario Odyssey, we also got a lot of other things to look forward to as well. Pokemon Tournament, Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and Fire Emblem Warriors. Plus little surprises like Samus Returns for the 3DS on the Treehouse Live. And that is just the first party stuff. Okay, Rabbids not exactly first party, but still. This year we got Super Mario Party, Hollow Knight, Fire Emblem, and Fortnite as a reveal, sort of. Really just Super Mario Party. Let's just talk about each thing here. Super Mario Party is not something I predicted, but something I should have. It is something I've talked to my friends casually about, stating the Switch would be perfect to handle a party style of games. Well, a different one than this one. It looks pretty interesting and back to some of the basics while still evolving in a good way. Plus, they've recently confirmed online play with mini games and leaderboards with them. It does seem like the game boards are still couch play, which I'm all for. Fortnite was the game everyone and their mothers knew about. Leak after leak after data mining, the game was known about for a while now. And it doesn't matter which camp you're in, the camp that likes it and enjoys it, or the camp that thinks it's not good for the gaming world as a whole, there's one thing I think we can all agree upon, that it is pretty big that it's come to the Switch. Plus, much like Rocket League, cross-platform play. Well, except PS4. We will just ignore that debacle. Okay, maybe not. Can someone please explain the logic of not allowing one console to not play with others and then block your ability to use your PS4 used Fortnite account on your Switch? Is there any logic here? Because I'd love to hear it! Hollow Knight is a game that I had only heard of in name. I know, I know. I need to get more into indie games. But learning it was a Metroidvania really has intrigued me. If a law comes around, or if it's on sale, I might grab it. Although, not sure about a law if I look in the near future. Which is a perfect segue to Xenoblade Chronicles 2 DLC. We got some more information on the story DLC pack, which is coming in September. Looks like we'll be able to experience the events of the past of the game. A lot of the cutscenes were devoted towards the past, and I for one am excited to dive right in. During the Treehouse, we got to learn about a DLC update that was released last week, which is the Challenge Battle Mode, making you take on a series of challenges and battles. Plus, you can get Shulk and Fiora from the first Xenoblade Chronicles and use them as blades. That is pretty cool. Plus a mode where you get to play as Jin and destroy waves of soldiers. Yay! Death and destruction! And keeping on the DLC train, it was revealed after the World Championship of Splatoon 2, the Octo expansion was hitting last week as well. Much sooner than I think many people were realizing. It was a pleasant surprise for sure. What was not a surprise was we finally got a look at Fire Emblem. Everyone was predicting that one but the spring release date was a bit of a disappointment. I do like the idea of you being able to see your army behind you and they help you with the battles. It didn't look too polished, but I am excited to see how it grows in the coming months. Other than the Gundam-esque game that started the Direct and Smash, there was not any other real surprises. And as excited as Smash made me, I kept holding on to the hope that the Treehouse Live would reveal something more, like they have in the past. I mean, they say they are going to be supporting the 3DS in the 2019 and beyond, but it gets harder and harder to believe. 
but each day was more smash a bit of Pokemon Let's Go, Octopath Traveler, Mario Tennis, and Starlink. Which, having Fox is pretty cool. Probably the biggest surprise behind Ridley. Get it? Biggest surprise? Quiet, you. Anyways, the Treehouse didn't reveal any surprise games. Heck, I think we were all hoping for a reveal of a third new character for Smash. But just Daisy and Ridley. Many people and many news articles are mentioning, should we be worried about the Switch? And to that I answer, what? The last half of this year, in a first party major game since, we are getting Octopath Traveler, a meaty DLC campaign for both Dino Bay Chronicles 2 and Splatoon 2, the latter has been confirmed with getting updates going into the end of 2018, Mario Tennis Aces, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, and regardless of what people are saying now, that they won't get it, it will sell like gangbusters and you know it, and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Plus, all the third-party games, indies, and more. E3 is no longer the only place for Nintendo to reveal things, and I think that is why people are saying Nintendo Switch is in trouble. There are two problems with this E3 and many others. First, rumors. People will believe any rumor. People were so sure an HD Skyward Sword was coming when there was no real hints or proof of it. People were so sure Metroid Prime 4 was going to be in full force. Okay, no, we knew Smash was coming, they didn't want to have that be buried by it. And they needed more time. Reggie even admitted it wouldn't have been fair to show Metroid Prime 4 this year. I walked into E3 thinking we'd not get one piece of Metroid Prime info. Then there were the rumors about Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door remake for 3DS. Star Fox Grand Prix was another big one. Because you hear a rumor from a quote, source, unquote, doesn't mean it's true. The second reason was the honest to goodness lack of surprises. Even though we get many surprises throughout the year with directs, E3 is always a fun time for big surprises. And we knew about Smash in March. And it was a shock that we were getting Pichu and everyone back, but we still knew Smash was coming. And in a way, I blame esports. Hear me out here. Nintendo is really embracing esports as of late, and one of the biggest Nintendo games of esport is Smash. But they can't announce Smash at E3 and hold a tournament. It would get leaked quick. So the big what would have been a surprise had to at least be teased to set up the tournament. I'm not saying it was a bad idea and esports are evil. I'm saying that it was a choice and I don't think there was a right choice or a wrong choice here. But imagine if Reggie at the end of the direct was talking about a game we all know you have been looking forward to. Take a look. And it shows the Inkling reveal trailer. Then it goes into the character reveals and leading into everything else. And of course, that amazing Ridley reveal. But just showing what they had was still great. I hate games that are at two or three E3s. Personally, I'm not worried. And I really don't think anyone else should be. Smash is coming this year. A new Pokemon's coming this year. But if you take away Smash from Nintendo's E3 presence, yeah, it was bad. But if Smash was not there, it would have been a lot different. So you can't really judge it by that. We can easily get a Direct in the next month or two. Yes, more surprises would have been great. Seeing Yoshi would have been cool. I still have no clue why Yoshi games take forever. But as mentioned before, this year is still not looking too bad. I think we all need to learn to take rumors with a grain of salt because we have seen how believing them can turn out. I give Nintendo 2018 E3 a... Uh, wait a minute, am I grading E3s now? Nah. Let's just say it's not the strongest outing Nintendo's had, but it's very far from their worst. 2008 was probably the worst that I can remember. Thank you for joining me here at the Nintendo Network. I want to hear what your thoughts on this year's E3 is. Comment below. Remember to join the network by liking and subscribing to us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to decide to play Octo Expansion, the Xenoblade DLC, or the Octopath Traveler Prologue demo before Mario Tennis Aces comes out Friday. Yeah, Nintendo has nothing coming out other than Smash. I say sarcastically.